we have had the most generous donation. <laughs> this is basically everything that we found that we wanted for our boat. Wow, that was crazy. I got nervous again. This is the story of a sailboat, a dream, and the commitment to do your best and see where it leads. Today we are sailing the Caribbean. One day we will cross the ocean and sail Jacques Maté home to Greece. Subscribe and join us while we travel by sailboat and learn by experience. Facing fear, finding adventure, and falling in love. Are you excited, Lola? Are you shaking with excitement? Yes, Lola is shaking with excitement, and so are we. We have a big surprise for everybody. So here in St. Thomas, we found a way to get around. Their bus system is unlike anything I've seen anywhere. It's really cool. Yeah, it's they're like safari trucks. They look like um, that's what they call them. It's just like pickup trucks. Ooh, here we here's oh, here. Oh, here we go. Now. We got one now. We got one. The service is really good. We are sitting there for less than a minute, and then one of these safari buses just pulled right up. Oh. Whoa. Lola's timing is always impeccable. We just got stopped by, uh, I think he's like beach security in this Jeep and he said, just so you know, you can't let the dog off the beach. And then she just drops a massive turd right there. We're about to start a project, a massive project that's gonna change the game for living on our boat. We have had the most generous donation and they wish to remain anonymous, but this is a Sailrite mother load package. We're working on it um, on Caterpillar's boat because we were given all of the materials, but we've never done any sewing and we don't have a sewing machi machine, but Caterpillar has a Sailrite and Dana Lee knows a thing or two, so she's gonna give us some tips and tricks. Yeah, also they were generous enough to use the space they have on their boat and to store all of this stuff until we were able to start working on this project. All right, so this beach is called Brewer Beach and it is like three miles from where our boat is moored. We have been tempted to come around here and anchor because it is a little calmer. Hello. Your taxi. So our incredibly generous anonymous donors, they wanted us to pick what was going to go into our boat. So they said, you know, go on the Sailrite website, look at fabrics, think about what you want. So this is basically everything that we found that we wanted for our boat. What you're looking at is cockpit cushions, a shade awning for the cockpit, uh, settee cushions and covers. Um, we're gonna make some pillows. We're gonna put new covers on those funny wedges that we use um, and curtains. We're gonna start with the shade cover, which is definitely gonna change the game for us. Not being able to really hang out in the cockpit because the sun is blasting you. It takes away like half of your floor space. It's beautiful. This one right here is what we're going to be creating the shade awning out of. Should just slide right out of there. It's not sliding out. Okay, 
this is our cockpit cushions and we're unpacking it now even though we're not working on this project today or even in the next week because it needs to it needs a whole week in order to decompress so the foam the fabric the accessories everything is from sell right and the reason we're using this particular foam for our cockpit cushions is because it's the dry fast sort so we don't have a lot of room on our boat it's not like we can bring our cockpit cushions in every time it rains so we got this because it dries quickly hence the dry fast name that it gets wet and the water just goes right through it what's gonna happen it's gonna go Really? Like a pepper fish. Not really. Oh wow. Actually. That was actually That's pretty calm. Huh? But let's take note on how thin that is. We'll see what it looks like in a week. We're definitely not experts. We're gonna be watching some sail right videos. But the wild card here is that Dana Lee has actually done a lot of her own sewing around the boat. So she's gonna be our expert and between her and the sail right videos, I think we'll figure this out. This here is the mother load, the sail right. I've actually never seen one in person. But I've heard a lot about them. There's so much to think about ahead of time. And Dan Lee did help Michael. Those two were in cahoots. But something like this little soapstone pen to draw the lines, I mean, I would have probably used a permanent marker and that's probably not the play. The carpet's moving. I don't know what's going on. I don't know how well it translates over the camera. I'll try to get a shot for you, but this fabric is kind of trippy. The light and dark lines when they overlap and they're not perfectly straight and you're looking at it intently, it just kind of makes you go a little dizzy. They're gonna be like, no, it's just you guys. I'm straight down at it. This is pretty crazy. Have any of you seen those books with all those patterns in them and you're supposed to look at it really hard and then something pops out? You're supposed to be able to see a shape or an elephant? Well, I was never good at those books. I'd always just look at it and I would never see it. Um, that's what this feels like, trying to cut this line. Spicing things up a bit. We're gonna use the hot knife. Apparently I made the scissors look very difficult. So I'm a little nervous because this is a hot knife. And I've never used a hot knife before, but Danily just gave me an example to follow. Lost within a haze. Don't rely on others to get you through the maze. The dreams are not the same for me. Standing by the shore. Now let's talk techniques here. We're using this little metal square so we don't burn the boat down. The open sea cannot take this. My mom's a seamstress and a great cook. I learned how to cook from her, but I didn't pick up on the sewing part. But I remember watching her back in the day, um, holding her hems together with pins and the basting tape just kind of makes the whole pin situation irrelevant. You can come back in with your fine jewel file and you can polish this area. All right, I think we're ready for prime time now. What I did was I uh, filed the little rough spot off the edge here, which is what Salright said to do. At some point the needle hit this and it scratched it and made a little burr on the edge here. And when it does that, it gets a burr and the thread rubs against it, it, it's, it shreds the thread apart. I'm really, really excited about this. Maybe more than I should be. Alright, I need that. In here, and you'll see when you sit down yeah. on the machine. Goes through there, through here, through there. You'll hear a little click. 
from the outside. And Drew often helps me with this because I can't see a You got thing. it on the first try. <laughs> so I want to hold this when I start sewing. Okay, so that seems buried. So the thread is still okay. shredding a bit. Test run number two. This time we just replaced the needle. Maybe there was a burr in the needle. Now I don't have to worry about the tails. Exactly. Yeah. So hard. Like that. Danalee showed me how to line it up a lot better because I was having trouble getting the hang of it. I kind of got off my mark right away. Should I go off the fabric and then go uh, back? No, keep okay. your needle. Cool. I think I'm perfect. Does that look like it's pretty close to the edge? It's pretty close to the edge. Okay. You know what this thing reminds me of? A Tommy gun! Whoa, what's that? That's a binder feeding tool. Binder, what is it? A binder it's a, foot? It's a binding, yeah, binding foot. Binding foot? Binding feeder foot tool. And the fabric's gonna go here. Um, I've never used well, I've really only sewn before in middle school home ec, so I've never done any binding before. Um, but it's just supposed to create that finished professional edge look to the fabric, and I think it's also going to really help the edges keep from fraying. That's the spot. Oh, sh So the binding edge was actually quite difficult. Um, my, we had to retry probably four times, rip it out. But Sailrite is amazing. Really what we're doing is we're looking at the instruction manual. We're going to YouTube and watching Sailrite videos. And there's a video on pretty much anything you need to know. You're free! Wow! That was crazy. Uh, looked like that sailboat got caught up in the uh, in that yacht transport's anchor chain. I think that little boat just lost their engine or something. Now we decided to move off of the mooring ball, which is a hard decision because it's comfortable and Jesse was letting us stay on that mooring ball free of charge, which is like a huge value. But in order to be more efficient on this project, we have decided to move over to Brewer Bay right next to Caterpillar. That way we can spend more time on this project and knock it out. So what happened is the first day we went, we left at about 5.30, tried to catch the safari truck back and they stopped running. So we ended up walking all the way back. It was about a three and a half mile walk and it wasn't too bad, but you know, we don't want to do that every time. And we'd like to spend more time on this project so we can get her done. I got nervous again before we got off the mooring. I guess 10 days is long enough to just get nervous. I feel good now that we're going. Lola, you look pretty good.
So we wasted no time, anchored down, ate a little lunch, and we zoomed over here to Caterpillar's boat, and we're cutting the second piece for that awning. So this is outside that, right? You guys did that first. Uh, stay on the straight, on the wide side. Stay on the straight and narrow. Oh, all right. How's it looking, Sifu Hotman? It's like, uh, That's like butter. it's like cutting butter with a butter knife. Dole's going down. Michael's going down. All right, we're pretty much pros now, so we're gonna have a competition. We're doing the hems. Michael's gonna do port side hem. I'm gonna do starboard side hem, and you guys are gonna judge. Oh, I forgot to back it up. Dang it, that was kind of a long stitch. We're too. gonna have to ding you. You forgot to back it up. Help you. you might have to assist me and I might have to assist you <clears throat> on the fabric. Alright, I gotta help Michael. Even though we're competitors, we have to help each other as well. Alright, I feel good. I feel confident. My two lines are down. Joel, you still feel... I feel very scared and intimidated. <laughs> and I'm, I'm thinking maybe Michael should just do both sides because she did so good. I'm a little nervous, but... Since when do you shy away from a little friendly I competition? I cannot let myself shy away from it, mm -hmm. so... Mm -hmm. You know, you're gonna have to live with the consequences of this competition. You're gonna have to look at this. Oh no, we'll rip it out if it's terrible. True. I ran out of bobbin. That's gonna cost me. That, that wasn't my fault though. That, ha that happens to everybody. You run out of bobbin, you have to rebob it. This sewing machine actually is using two threads and combining them with a knot in every stitch. So the bobbin is down below, and then the main thread is coming from here, and it's combining them in each stitch. Let's go, Michael. Let's go, Michael. I want the viewers to note that Michael didn't let me film. I had to feed her the rock. Meanwhile, I'm over here doing pro status. Don't even have anyone helping me with the material. Of course. Always the underdog. Always the underdog and always the winner. I know most of you are just gonna vote Michael if we don't do some kind of anonymous thing here. So, my right hand is your left. This is A, side A. My left hand is your right, side B. All right, so you're voting on, I mean, if you guys know sewing, then you're gonna vote on whatever you guys know to vote on. But in my opinion, it's just who got the straightest line, the sharpest edges, and the meanest thread. It's a house of cards right now. The shade could go at any moment. This is only a test, and it's uh, being held together by clothespins right now. By a hope and a prayer. Yeah, it's already kind of coming off. But how nice is this? We, oh my God, having shade in the cockpit, I am so excited. The finished product is gonna look a lot different, be a lot more secure. So what else do we have left to do on this? Why don't you let them know? We're gonna install a couple battens. Um, Battens are, for those of you who may not know, mm. it's like a fiberglass strip that's going to make it rigid and then we're going to have pockets that, yep. like the tent, you know, right. that gives it shape. We're also going to install grommets so we can lash it down to our stanchions. We'll uh, secure it in the back to the solar panel mounts 
And we're gonna make we're gonna put snaps along the sides. Oh right. And then it's gonna all we're also gonna have shade that drops down. Yeah. But that's made out of a different material. That's fiber text. Fiber text. So you can see out of it, mm -hmm. but you can't see into it. Natalie had an idea to connect two pieces in the middle with Velcro to make room for our topping lift, and that it's working is perfect, splendidly, yeah. measured so to perfection. Really cool. This is definitely the most generous donation um, in Bums on a Boat history ever, easily. Yeah, the raw materials are gonna run about two thousand dollars. Everything we showed you in the beginning of this episode. Yeah. If you were to pay somebody to do these, all these jobs, we estimate ten thousand dollars of work. Yeah, just throwing rough numbers out there, but it's crazy. It's already amazing just hanging out in the cockpit with this, you know, flopping shade cover here. But we really don't hang out much in the cockpit because it's so hot. Yeah, it's so unprotected. Um, obviously this isn't something that we'll be able to leave up while we're sailing, but just to increase our living space for the 90% of our time that we spend on anchor, it's huge. This is a game changer. These are the tails of Boab. So it's tapered perfectly. It goes right to the end of the boat, and then as you go back, it starts to go more and more narrow. And they did a great job on measurements there. Whoop.